Okay, so I'm really excited about this. So we're doing the gut health workshop. So as many of y'all know, the disease starts in the gut. So um, when I use gut, it is the GI tract, um, but mainly I'm talking about the lower intestine, our, our, um, our colon. So that is the main reason. I mean, the whole digestive tract obviously can get ruined, um, but mainly when I use the word gut, I'm talking about the lower intestine, um, which is your, your colon. And in that, that's the reason why that's the, the most important is because that's where all your, your bacteria is. You do have um, 70 to 80% of your immune system throughout your um, entire GI tract. So um, all of the GI tract obviously is very important. And if we were to stretch out your um, GI tract, it would go from one end of your house to probably the end of your neighbors and maybe even one further. So there is, um, I want to say about 250 feet of um, intestinal tract going on um, inside you. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to share my, um, my screen here. So this is my, uh, this is my, my stomach. <laughs> so we want, uh, a lot of us are either aiming for um, feeling better overall. Some of us are here to uh, have, um, you know, lose the weight that we're wanting. Um, and some of us are here to kind of just tackle and, and just understand gut health. And, and so for those that are on already, let me know. And if you're watching the replay, um, you can type in and let me know what your, um, what your goal is with this. Um, so in the chat box, because I want to get to know y'all. I want this to be something informative for y'all and be able to have a little bit of that one-on-one -on -one with me. So um, feel free, like I said, in that chat box, that is completely, completely yours to ask questions and um, really, really dive into this. And I can, if you've watched my live videos, you know I can talk. So I want to, you know, make sure that I give you all that opportunity to, to speak up as well. So definitely, um, you know, use that chat box. Okay, so what's all the fuss about uh, with, with gut health? And the reason why we really want to, to really tackle our gut health is because um, what happens in our, our intestines is that our gut wall lining um, should have these little things called villi. They're hair-like things that um, stick out, but they're there to help because it has more surface area. So the goal of that is when food is food particles are digested or they're even, they're being partially digested, that has more surface area for our bodies to um, start catching it and to absorb it. However, um, if we become stressed or if we're not feeding our body the right things, what actually happens is is those hair-like follicles, those villi, actually start to go away, and then you're left here with a smooth surface. And so you get that smooth surface kind of going on, and um, that's less surface area for things to kind of get caught, uh, which is a good thing. We want, we want those food particles to be absorbed, to have that, that opportunity to be grabbed and, and absorbed in our, um, in, our, in our GI tract. And the cool thing about our GI tract is that there's different locations for different um, absor there are different absorption sites. So if we have any damage going on, it could be certain things. So that's why some people um, have a, um, a, an intolerance to certain foods where someone else might not. It just depends on that, that um, location of, of where that damage was done. Obviously, if it is a true protein allergy, which when we're allergic to something, we're allergic to the protein, that's a different um, situation. But if it's just a sensitivity or we develop something along the way, um, typically it's because that certain absorption site was damaged, whether it be damaged from stress, from antibiotic usage, from medication usage, or from um, poor, poor um, diet. And, and that's caused mainly from, um, mainly from our, our um, processed foods. So when our wall ends up becoming thin like that, um, or, or slick like this, it actually starts to start thinning out so um, it becomes inflamed, but at the same time, it becomes, the wall becomes thin. And what happens with that is that is the perfect setup for that leaky gut. And if y'all have heard about leaky gut, um, let me know in the, in the comments if you have heard about it, because what that leaky gut is, is that you actually, if you want to think of the wall now, um, yes, it has this hair-like things on it, or it should. It's also like a chain link fence. So things are, are linked up. But when we have um, a leaky gut, what happens is 
is that link is, is broken and it allows for full food particles to be um, put through that. Not just that partially broken down. So even food um, that should be absorbed lower in your intestine because it hasn't been broken down yet um, can get through that gut wall. And so what, what's happening is, is that um, if you kind of think of how it goes through and so now it's over here and it can actually start attaching itself to nerve receptors um, in, our, in our stomach, in our intestines, um, on the outside of them, not on the inside of them, on the outside. You don't have nerves on the inside. Um, but what happens is, is those nerve um, receptors get signals sent to the brain. And this is right here why people start getting anxiety, depression, mood swings because of that, that um, either bad bacteria or... The, the food particles attaching itself onto that. And then if you think about it, if food particles are gonna be going through that, that wall, what's, what's going to happen with that? You're going to have some sort of um, you know, mechanism where your body says, oh, that's a foreign object. I mean, if you have someone trying to come into your house and they're not supposed to be coming into your house, what are you gonna do about it? You're gonna fight it, right? You're going to fight that, that foreign object, you're gonna fight that person, you're gonna fight that food particle. So what happens is, is this is how autoimmune disease and chronic de disease starts to occur, and, and definitely type two diabetes and, and cancer. Um, the obesity does happen as well, that has been linked to poor gut health. And, um, and, that's, and that's just a little bit of a different um, scenario, but, and I'll get there in just a second, but that chronic disease, that autoimmune disease, is exactly what it sounds like we were talking about. If there's an intruder coming through, your body is not recognizing it because it shouldn't be there. And so we're, we're fighting it. So that's our body's mechanism to fight that, that food particle. So if y'all are, are in, um, enjoying this, I mean, I can't, I think most of y'all have your, your videos um, cut out, so I can't see y'all. But if y'all are, you know, if you're there, give me a hands up that, or a thumbs up that you're, that you're following along or type in the, the chat box. I want to make sure that, um, that I'm able to see everything. So let me open up the chat box. Okay. So what I want y'all to also think about is when we start gaining weight. So many of y'all are here because of, of that as well. So what happens when we are gaining weight because of um, poor gut health, it's because that bad bacteria starts to take over. And, um, and I'll share a slide later on, but I'll mention it here again, that um, you actually should have anywhere from two to three pounds of good bacteria in your gut. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot going on. Um, so what can happen is, is when you have that, that, that bad bacteria start to overgrow because, and we'll get to why that starts to happen later, but once you have that bad bacteria start to overgrow, what happens is um, that your body isn't um, being able to break down certain food items. So that good bacteria starts to break down food particles so we can absorb it. Um, I don't, I'm seeing like a red line. I don't know why there's a red line <laughs> um, that keeps happening. So, um, okay. Anyways, if y'all see it, let me know. If not, I'm, my computer's doing something funky. Okay, so what you see here is the, um, are, are, what are the causes of poor gut health? So let me minimize that a little bit. Okay, this is the, what the causes of the poor gut health. And there's typically, there's six reasons why we have um, poor gut health. And um, if y'all want to, y'all can let me know, um, jump in. Like I said, I want this to make sure that, this is kind of how I teach, this is how, you'll get um, familiar. This is how it's gonna be on, um, if y'all sign up for the, the um, Chronic Disease Health Reset Academy. This is what Joel, you're gonna be getting certain ways. So uh, you can get some of this one-on-one. -on -one. So if y'all have any questions along the, the way, make sure you, you're asking and jump in. Um, so gut health. And so with gut health, what's happening is um, stress. Stress can be a trigger. Stress reduces the blood flow to the intestines, um, and then that can lead to poor gut health. If you then the microbiome, which we're going to get to soon, um, that's our, our good bacteria. What happens is if we have that, that bad bacteria overgrown, or we have never replenished it, or, or if we've been on antibiotics, that bad bacteria 
is going to start overgrowing and take control and that can start causing um, a lot of different issues. Um, I'm sure some of y'all have heard of like candida where there's a lot of yeast overgrowth. Um, that's because we're not having the right kinds of good bacteria in our guts. And that's just a part of, of what, what goes on right there. Um, and I bet y'all didn't expect to have the mental or emotional health aspect of that either. So that mental and emotional health, the reason why that is so important is that um, have y'all ever been in a stress state where you're just super stressed and you're like, I don't, I'm, I'm anxious, I'm having, you know, and then you, you notice that you start going to the bathroom more frequently or you have more uh, increased bowel movements. Um, that's just one part of it. But that mental and emotional health, if we are not in that right state of mind, what's happening is, is that we're, we're going, we're, we're having all these like, um, doubts about ourselves. We're, we're lowering our vibration. We're, we're, what, what's happening is that we, um, you know, when people are happy, you can literally measure their vibration. You, it starts to like, there's, there's medical parts. Okay. Hey, this is, this is mom life here. Okay. It's your turn, okay? Love you. Okay, it's your turn, okay? <laughs> so, it was a slobber kiss. Can you shut the door? I love you. It's your turn. Because mommy's doing this. Can you go tell daddy that mommy's doing her call? Okay. So, so that emotional and mental health is super important because if you are self-doubting yourself um, and you don't believe that you can do it, if you are worried that, um, you know, you're going to start something and then you're going to fail again, um, that's, that, that goes into that. So it has a kind of a wide component of that. And we'll, we'll definitely dive into a lot of this. The only one I'm not really going to be diving too far into that is the immunity and genetics. Um, genetics in the sense of I am not an expert in, in genetics. Um, so just uh, that olive oil. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we also want to um, realize that how important sleep is when it comes to our, our health. Um, sleep, if we're not getting enough sleep, our bodies are not having enough time to repair itself. Kind of your mom, you remember your mom growing up would say, okay, hey, you know, you need to get some rest. You need to, you know, that's when you're going to grow. That's when you're going to, you know, get, big, get bigger. That's true. That's true. So you, we, when we were younger, we, our body was being able to, grow and do everything, um, repair itself. Same thing as, as right now as adults. We need that, that, that right amount of, of sleep to be able to repair ourselves. So we could be doing so much when it comes to improving, um, you know, we're eating the, the, the best um, shakes, we're taking the right supplements, we're doing all the good things, but we're still not seeing the results. Check how long you've been sleeping for. Are you only sleeping six hours a night? five and a half hours, you know, even maybe seven hours for some of y'all. I know for my body, I need eight hours of sleep. Uh, if I don't have eight hours of sleep, I start to get sick. I start having health issues. Um, so I have found that correlation with the amount of sleep that my body actually needs um, to actually function and start repairing itself. When I was not um, getting enough sleep, um, and I know it's hard with a lot of new moms, but when I, especially after having kids, I ended up having um, anxiety like crazy. I ended up having a lot of, of migraines. I ended up having a lot of other issues that were going on because I was not taking care of myself by sleeping and, and napping. Um, I thought that all I had to do, and you know, as, a lot of times as, as, as parents um, and just women in general, we have a lot of craziness that happens throughout the day. So at night, what we tend to do is get our phone out and we just kind of go on it, right? We're trying to goof up on it. We go on Pinterest, we go on Facebook. All of that ends up happening, um, but we're not sleeping. We're, we're, we stay up or we, we binge watch a show on Netflix. If that's, what, if that's what's happening, you're cutting into your sleep time and you think, okay, I'm getting that me time for myself so I can rest and relax. I love you. I love you too. And I'm going to hug. All right. Um, I can hold it. Okay, thank you, buddy. So what we want to do is um, is really make sure. Bye, buddy. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so what we want to do is make sure that we're getting that sleep that we that we need. Um, if that that sleep is crucial to repair our bodies, and I said I can't stress that enough. Um, I have a lot of clients that once I start getting in, in it, and I get it, y'all are like, well, Nicole, I have a horrible, I have so much going on. I don't even know when I'm going to have time for this. I totally get it. I had a client this morning at 8:30 same thing was going on um, just so much she's so busy she's running a business she even has a personal assistant to take some of the weight off of her but she's still so so busy she has two kids a husband you know she has a life and that's everyone we all have all these these things that we're trying to juggle at one time what we have to do sometimes is prioritize see what is good um, and helpful for us because if we don't sleep is going to to suffer and if we don't um, you know, prioritize sleep as something up here, which is basically saying you're prioritizing yourself. If you put sleep down here, you're basically saying you could care. Um, I mean, my son's not in here. You could um, care less. It's you're, you're, you're shitty. You're you, whatever, you know, and you think you, you might be trying to do the best thing, but that's really in reality what you're doing. You're putting your, 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 your um, you know, yourself lower on the totem pole, basically. That's really what's, what's happening here. And of course, exercise. We have to be more active. Um, the more active we can be, the better off we're going to be. Um, and that actually helps improve blood flow and, and to our intestines. That also, with that um, exercise, what it also is doing is re, re, um, releasing endorphins. And when we are releasing endorphins, we're going to be less stressed. So that is something really important that we have to remember that exercise and stress management and gut health go hand in hand. And y'all are probably here, really here for the diets. And so, um, you know, being a dietitian, obviously that is my forte. That is what I have my degree in. And um, that's really where, where I shine. But I also understand that unless I have all of these balanced, it's this, the diet is not going to work. It is not going to matter um, if I don't have everything else in check. And I'm living proof too that, you know, I've been a registered dietitian for over nine years. Um, I mean, I'm looking at my diploma on the wall. So it was 2008 when I graduated from college, um, had a year long internship after that. And since then, I, you know, obviously I have my, my nutrition on point. I do very well in that and I, I don't struggle with that, but I will tell you, I have struggled with my gut health still. And it was because I was not managing my stress properly. And so, um, if even if like, like you're me, if even if you have your nutrition on point, everything else can get out of whack just because of your stress. I always have started having um, more heart issues. I have a congenital heart disease, um, and it started going a little bit more crazy on me. I ended up having um, anxiety um, more. I had a panic attack, uh, all because of stress. And because of that, my gut health started to, to fail on me and I started developing a dairy allergy. Um, you know, I have since managed my stress um, well. I am, have since added uh, dairy and it was also egg. I have both um, been able to tolerate both of those again. So it's not gonna say that just because you don't tolerate something at this moment, doesn't mean you won't be able to later on. We really just have to tackle everything as a whole. And once we start doing that, your gut health will start to repair itself. Then when your gut health starts to repair itself, everything else starts to fall into place. All right. So we're gonna identify your triggers. So um, I'm going to put someone on the hot spot. So kids, if someone, if you can either raise your hand, there's a, a way to raise your hand here. Um, I want to go through and, and see about your common triggers. What are something that you know that you can, um, that you eat, that you don't tolerate very well. And we're going to work on, on kind of walking through how you can start, um, either reincorporating it or find another alternative to it. So is there anyone brave enough to, to do this or <laughs> let's see, I'm going to open up the chat box. All right, ladies, your little crickets over here. I'm going to make you do this. <laughs> No one? All right, well, if y'all feel comfortable, you can either unmute yourself. Okay, so yay! Look at that, good job guys. Okay, 
So Kara is saying dairy or, or coffee or caffeine. Okay, so um, I am going to unmute you. Are you, are you, and, and I'm gonna ask you a few questions. Oh, actually you have your, there you go. Okay, so how are you doing Kara? I don't know if you have yours on, um, your microphone on or not, but I don't hear you. But I want to ask you a couple questions. So, um, and this is like what you're going to be getting with, with me. Okay, so Charity also is saying dairy. So, Kara, if you can, um, if you can talk back or you can put it in the group, Zoom, um, in the group chat, um, how long have you not been able to tolerate dairy? Has this been something long term as like as, you know, a child? Or is it something more recently where you started noticing that you started developing uh, issues? And um, so just let me know that. Same thing with you, Charity. Um, you can definitely, more recently after high school. Okay, so as we get older, if you were, if, you know, I'm glad you mentioned after high school because if it was over, um, if you were like in your 60s or 70s, I would say, okay, as we get older, we actually lose that ability to digest um, dairy. It's called the, the lact lactase, that's an enzyme. So I would say that could be a possibility of that happening. But if you're this young um, and you have just recently developed a, a dairy allergy, more than likely, this is something, like I said, either due to stress, um, how do you feel like your stress level is? Um, you can also contribute to this um, as eating too many processed foods. After a while, after we eat a lot of processed foods, um, inflammation starts to occur, our that villi starts to go away, and then our, um, our issues start to happen. So we can kind of pinpoint what is going on with you. Um, so you worked with a holistic nutritionist last year and cut everything out. Awesome, Charity. Um, do you feel like you're you're doing better now? Um, like, are you, have you stayed dairy free or have you tried, um, uh, reintroducing it back in? And also, it also could be, um, thing that could cause problems. Um, oh, you think it could cause, um, problems if you reintroduce it? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so, um, so you're, you're worried, I'm assuming you're, um, Charity saying that you're worried if you reintroduce it back in, you're going to have problems. So when you saw that holistic nutritionist last year, um, were you having issues with that or was that something she just wanted you to wipe out altogether so that way you can, um, that way you can get to that point that, you know, some of the, some nutritionists, um, and I, I have a hard time saying that I'm not trying to offend anyone. Um, it's just, being a dietitian, I, I have a hard time using that, that word. It's something, if you know any other dietitian, you would know what I'm talking about. Um, so that could, like I said, it could be, um, you know, some people will have you say, okay, I'm trying to lose weight. Let me cut all the dairy out. Um, you don't necessarily have to, if you, if you don't have any sensitivity to it, meaning you're not having any diarrhea from it, um, some people end up developing like cystic acne from it. And it's more normally because of the hormones um, naturally found in that and in, in dairy. And so what you're wanting to do is, is think of, okay, one, we wanna make sure that we're doing no added hormones. Um, however, with the, um, with your, sorry, I'm, mute. I'm getting a, um, I think you've switched over from something charity. <laughs> I was getting some like back feed. Um, so what, what happens is, is that when you have um, dairy, we want to make sure that it's typically the organic um, version of that, because that, that is meaning that we're not getting any additional added hormones. We're not getting any additional antibiotics into it. They give our cows, our chickens, our fish, anything that's an, uh, of a protein source, um, Typically, they will give it antibiotics. That way, if one of them gets um, a bug, a, 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 gets sick, they don't spread it to everyone else. But what's happening is, is that's causing, we're getting that antibiotic. And so we're getting some of that good bacteria wiped out. In addition to, we're starting to, to develop super bugs. I know I have a client that ends up having, um, she got really sick, had pneumonia, and um, wasn't responding to any um, antibiotics because of the way her diet was, because she was getting a lot of that antibiotic um, um, 
foods, the dairy, the meats. So, um, if, some, if you have developed a, a recent allergy or a recent intolerance to something, I want y'all to go back up here and start to think about what's going on. You can also start journaling it. I am a huge advocate of writing stuff down. You can, um, you know, go and write down, um, you know, gut health, stress, um, put all these and put them in, in a range of an order one through, you know, six, which one do you think one being the less stressful or the most stressful and six being the less stressful or, or the most priority or the less, however you want to do it, but start tackling all of these components and start writing down what you think it could be. That way we can start focusing more on, on how to improve this, how to, how to work it out. I mean, if we were working one-on-one -on -one or in the group, I would really be kind of trying to pull this out of y'all trying to figure this out. But um, that's something huge. Caffeine or coffee, what I really recommend, if you have any gut health issues at all or any anxiety or depression or any stress, uh, high stress, caffeine is not your friend at all. <laughs> caffeine is not your friend. So caffeine is um, will restrict blood vessels. And when it restricts the blood vessels, that's reducing blood flow to the intestines. Um, it also, what happens, especially in the anxiety and depression and stress-related um, individuals, it also increases our heart rate because that, those blood vessels are constricted. If you think about a hose, what happens when you put pressure on a hose? It, it, it shoots out, but you're constricting it, right? Same thing's happening with our, our inside of our arteries, our veins. If we're putting that caffeine there and restricting, it's going to increase our heart rate to try to push that blood flow, um, blood flow out through that. In turn, it's going to um, end up, up causing a lot of issues with more anxiety, um, and especially also migraines. If you suffer from migraines, it's another thing. So, um, okay, so I cut everything out and um, slowly added everything back in to see what I was sensitive to, and dairy was the main one. I noticed a difference, got bloated, I felt yucky, um, and I would eat a lot of dairy stuff. Now I have it on rare occasions, mainly cheese, but I just um, bought Greek yogurt again the other day. Okay, good. So again, and the thing with, with dairy is if you don't use it, you lose it. So if there is no need for that lactase enzyme, your body is not going to produce it. So when you reintroduce something back into it that needs that enzyme to help digest it, um, then you, yes, you, you're going to run into issues like that. So a lot of women that I work with admit one, we have to make sure your gut is on point and, and, and healthy for you to be able to start reintroducing it. Cause if not, you can start doing some damage to the gut lining. And two, we need to add it in very, very small amounts. I'm talking about, you know, an ounce, um, and, and sprinkling it in, seeing how you do. Um, wait a couple days, do another ounce of it. Very, very small introduction. It's something very small that we want to do. That way we can build our body's weight way up to back to reintroducing that, that lactase enzyme. Um, and eventually you will be able to kind of reintroduce yourself. But if you go for a long time, a year or two without any, you might give yourself that lactose intolerance and not be able to tolerate it at all. Um, you know, try goat cheese as well. Goat cheese uh, might be a little bit better tolerated. Um, but typically, if you not have a protein allergy, what you're having a reaction to is actually the, the sugar in it, the milk sugar, um, which is lactose. So lactose is the milk sugar. Lactase is the enzyme that helps break it down to digest it. So, yeah, and I think, you know, Greek yogurt is a great way to, to start into it. Um, so, again, like I said, just I would – do very small amounts. Uh, you know, you start, you can, you know, it's hard to do only an ounce of Greek yogurt if you're trying to eat it like regular yogurt. You can mix it in with um, cashew yogurt um, to give yourself a little bit of, of that. Or you can also even, you know, add a little dollop on, you know, make something and pretend it's um, sour cream. And so I, I, we do that a, a lot as well. Okay. And um, so, like I said, we wanted to identify those, those, um, uh, those triggers. Oh, and one thing I didn't touch base on is our hormones. So um, sometimes when we are, um, have our hormones out of um, whack, basically, for lack of a better term, um, what can happen is typically what happens is our estrogen becomes really high. 
and then we can start developing a lot of issues with that as well. So if you have, um, you, you'll know you have high estrogen if your hips area, hips and thighs, um, is, is really a lot thicker than every, any other part of your body. If you have heavy menstrual um, flow, or if you get um, breakout around the chin, that's typically a sign of too much estrogen. And so that also needs to be addressed first. Um, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand. You, you improve the gut health, it's gonna help improve the estrogen, but there's also certain foods and seeds that we need to, to, to do and, or not to do to help balance that off. So if y'all want, I have made this um, gut health tracker for y'all so you can write down, okay, what I ate, um, I mean, um, Charity already has done this uh, on her own or with a holistic nutritionist before in the sense of you've, you've made a list, you've reintroduced it, you, you know what's going on. Um, but I also want you to see, or I said, including your mood, include the mood into that. How are you? Were you happy or were you upset? Or were you nervous? Um, did you have anxiety? Like I said, all of that's going to tie into how you're feeling, how you, you digest that food. Um, and then also your BM is your bowel movement. Um, and, and this is important too, because uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk poop here, ladies. <laughs> it is the poop talk show. Okay, so poop is really important. So how many of y'all look at your poop? <laughs> I mean, I don't do it all the time. I feel like um, if my stomach is upset, then obviously I do look at it, but I do understand that what my typical poop looks like. Um, and I want y'all to also be aware of what your poop looks like. Um, I get more women, we all poop, we all fart. I don't care what anyone says, <laughs> that happens. Um, we actually have about two liters. Like if you think of what a liter of a two liter can of soda, is, I mean bottle of soda, that's how much um, gas we produce every single day. So for those that say they don't, they don't fart, they don't toot, they don't pass gas, you're lying, <laughs> you're lying, you're lying. Um, so, um, so let's talk poop. I want poop to sink. I don't want it to float. I want it to look like soft serve ice cream. I don't want it to look like balls. I don't want it to break apart into little pieces. I don't want to see a lot of food particles in it. Um, I, I don't want it to see it white. I do want to see it brown, even some gray is sometimes okay. Um, even green um, on variations. If it's like this color green, then that means you have, you know, usually gallbladder uh, issues going on. But yeah, a little bit of variances will, will change. Um, sometimes though, if we have dyes in our, in our food caused by processed foods. So I know um, my son one time, my, my husband brought him to, to um, I'm gonna try to say Sonic, and he got like a blue raspberry um, slushy, and um, he comes out worried and tells me my poop's blue, my poop's blue. Um, so if you are, and this is a good example of if you are one that um, eats processed foods that has dye in it, do know that your body will not digest or break down that dye. It will not digest that food that's going on in there. So you're going to more than likely have see a lot of the food particles in there, but more than definitely see that color. Um, and so that's just a sign that our body doesn't recognize it, it's not liking it, and it's, um, it's, it's eliminating it, it's getting, getting rid of it. So um, I also want y'all to, to note, you know, how long did you sleep? Did you have caffeine? Um, and and the, your food mood, what was going on um, in, in your, you know, in your life? Did you eat because you were in front of the TV? Um, sometimes we can overeat when we're in front of the TV or in front of the computer or on our phone. We can just do that mindless eating where we just do this. Um, try turning off the TV. Um, did you overeat um, something because you skipped a meal? Did you, you know, we want to we want to be aware of when we have a GI issue, when we have something going on in our gut that is not helpful for us, that we are addressing more than just the food that we ate. Um, because if we are having a hard time with our, our gut, like we mentioned way up here, um, all of this right here. Um, and I should have put in here thyroid as well because a poor gut health is definitely um, thyroid related as well. So a lot of my women that I have, I mean, I have um, 
close to 30 clients right now. And all of, I would say maybe 50%, that might be about it, um, have a thyroid issue going on. And so what we're typically tackling, the majority of them do have like an autoimmune disorder of some sort, but a new, um, majority of what we have to tackle is our gut health. Um, so how are foods that we eat are affecting our gut health? Um, processed foods um, is, is gonna be something, number one, we have to start eliminating that, removing that from our, our diet. And if you don't know how to do that, um, all the courses that I have start with a course called From Processed Foods to Whole Foods. And so, um, the, you know, the ladies that are already in my Health Reset Academy, the Chronic Disease Health Reset Academy, that's what they have access to right now is the From Processed Foods to Whole Foods. So they can start tackling and, and learning about that even before we start, we start in May 15th. So they're gonna be getting all of that information. I have modules set up, I have all the handouts, all the you know homework that they're needing to do, the meal plan at the very end of it. Um, so that way you can and start making that transition and understanding what you're eating and, and learn how to incorporate those whole foods because that's huge, that's so important. High amounts of sugar. We uh, had Easter recently. Before that was Christmas and then Halloween. You know, we have all these holidays that all we do is just share all this candy. Um, so we do need to be more aware of all the sugar that we're doing. Um, we also need to be aware of the sugars that are um, and, and refined sugar. And that means that it's not whole grain. When things are refined, um, you know, if you look at enriched, all of that enriched or refined, we don't want to eat that. That is just basically straight sugar. If you're looking at high fructose corn syrup, I know I've seen commercials that say high fructose corn syrup is, you know, does not have an effect or it's the same thing as, as sugar. Uh, well, yeah, it's the same thing as sugar. It still has that harmful effect on your blood, um, on your gut, on every, you know, sugar is, is inflammation. I, I, you can't go around that. Sugar is inflammation. Um, do I eat sugar? Yes, but I do it in moderation. I do it the right way. And that's one thing. Um, I know um, there's a couple of ladies on here that um, either I've worked with or work with currently, and they understand now that when I eat something that has sugar, I have to pair it with something, um, something else that's going to offset it from, from um, having that spike in our blood sugars. So um, this is one thing that I really can't, you know, this is, y'all can read over this. This is what I've kind of talked a little bit more about, but we need to really start reducing inflammation in our gut. That is the main thing that we need to start doing. Reduce inflammation in the gut, then we reduce inflammation all over. Um, and so let's start seeing, how do we start reducing our inflammation, huh? So we want to um, start doing the anti-inflammatory foods. We need to start in including good bacteria, some probiotics. Those that actually have like ulcerative colitis or um, Crohn's disease or IBS, they need to be on an actual probiotic supplement in addition to eating probiotics throughout the day. That means they need a lot more than the typical, um, you know, person, the typical um, one. If you have, if you feel like you have leaky gut, you need to be on a probiotic supplement. Um, and I can't stress that enough. And, and you have to be careful too about it. I have, um, yes, yesterday, two days ago, I talked with a different client and um, she has a lot of food allergies. And so what, what we were doing is she started taking a probiotic and she was like, I am um, having a lot of bloating and I don't understand what's happening with me. Um, and I was like, okay, I want you to go through and see if any, anything has um, dairy in it. If, and, and so she went through all of her food and the last thing she looked at was her probiotics. And her probiotics, it says, contains milk. <laughs> So even if you think it's something healthy for you, um, you know, I, I know that both of y'all, um, who was it, Kara and, um, and Charity both said dairy was something that y'all are, um, you know, have an intolerance to. Be careful even when you're looking at the probiotics. Um, look at everything. If it says whey, if it says lactose, if it says casein, all three of those are words for different kinds of components of dairy. So you want to be aware of that. Um, so another way to reduce inflammation is stress. We got to run and, and, and y'all follow me. That's why you're here. So you've heard me talk about stress. 
and, and what it can do to the body. It is nasty, nasty, nasty. Um, I mean, if y'all can see what's behind me, this, you know, I even have my crystals that help reduce our stress. I have, um, this is kind of my office slash meditation room slash Zen place. Um, you need to have a place in your house that you can um, go to, to, to like, if, if things get a little bit too crazy, you can, you can chill out. <laughs> um, I really do majority of my meditation and my, my, my journaling out in my, my vegetable garden. That is my, by far my happiest place. I'm outside in my, my, that's my environment. I enjoy, I, I, I feel like myself there. So I want y'all to also find a place like that. So when you are going through a hard time or, um, no, not even going through a hard time, we need to have these tools set up in place beforehand so that way you can reduce stress. Um, and I call these my non-negotiables. Um, I have a um, anti-anxiety health guide and my one-on-ones, my VIP and my, um, my academy ladies all get, a, um, they get, they get that because I think it's so important that everyone learns these tools to help reduce stress. Um, we need to have these, these, these things in place every day to prevent stress from happening, to prevent anxiety from happening. We need to have that balance in life. And if you're not having that balance in your life, it's not happening inside the gut. <laughs> it's not going to improve there. And we already talked about the mindset a little bit. So let's, let's move on. Um, so, okay. Like I said, this is, I, I want to make sure that there's going to be time at the end. I know we're um, almost coming up on an hour. So um, if y'all have any questions, be writing them down, um, put them in the, the group chat. So that way we can have all, the, I can start answering. We can have that one-on-one -on -one at the very end. Uh, I did a lot, two hours to this. So if it goes the full two hours, awesome. If it only goes an hour and a half, um, whatever it ends up being, I want this to be the most informative and y'all get a lot out of this. So um, obviously these are not all the anti-inflammatory foods out there, um, but this is just, I hope that y'all understand um, what I'm trying to get when I put everything right here. It is not just one food that is anti-inflammatory. It is a whole slew of um, fresh items. And so, um, you know, this is a, a morning bar that I make and that's in, actually it's in my free, nutrition portal too. I think this one, this recipe, so if y'all um, have not grabbed, if you go on to, I can, I can actually post this later on, but I have a free nutrition portal that you guys kind of get an, a, a, an idea of what it's going to be like, um, you know, to have your own full nutrition portal. Um, that's really where, where everyone has everything, where it has the full meal plans, it has everything in there. But this recipe is in here. Um, but it has seeds on top. It has antioxidants from the um, blueberries. It is has nuts. So nuts um, and seeds, I know the seeds are in here, but um, those are really good sources of that healthy fat. Healthy fat, um, I'm meaning the omega-3 fatty acids. So you have healthy fat right here. You have healthy fat with the avocado. You have healthy fat with your, your you know, fatty fishes. And you can even, like the, the meat I had tonight, I had grass-fed um, ground beef. So it is grass fed. If it's something is grass fed like bison or cow, um, it is going to have a better fat profile. So it is recognized as heart healthy because it has more omega-3 fatty acids in it. They're not being fed corn. They're not being fed byproducts of stuff. They're actually grazing on the grass like God intended them to. And they're, they're, you know, gobbling up everything and they're enjoying it because, um, that's what they're meant to do. They're meant to roam free. And so because they're roaming free, they're also getting exercise. And so that just also shows that if we are just sedentary, we're also going to have a less um, healthy fat profile for ourselves, meaning we're going to have bad cholesterol, higher risk of heart disease. Um, we get moving just like those animals. We're going to have a healthier fat profile. We're gonna, if we start eating more of the necessarily grass, but if we start eating more of those vegetables, we're going to also start doing a lot better. So any greens, I am a huge fan of adding any greens to anything. Um, I challenge you guys to start growing your own vegetables. I think that this is going to be the most fun thing um, I think anyone can, can do. I thoroughly enjoy gardening. That's just, I mean, that might just be me. 
But um, when you actually can go out to your garden or your patio, I, even before I had a backyard, I was growing stuff on my patio in, the, in an apartment um, because it is so, what, it's so satisfying. It tastes so much better than it does coming from the, um, the, the grocery store. And you're, you have availability to all this fresh produce right there at your fingertips. So, um, I mean, you just can't get any better than that. And the cool thing about leafy greens is that you, you, you trim them, you cut them, and they grow back, they grow back, they keep growing back. So, um, I mean, I've had my, my vegetable garden going for over a year, and all my greens in it, I haven't had to replace because they just keep going and going and going. So, um, that was my little side <laughs> squirrel moment there. But I want y'all to, um, anti-inflammatory, um, have high, high amounts of berries in your diet. I encourage anyone um, that has any inflammation going on at all to have at least half a cup of berries a day. If they have an autoimmune disorder, I prescribe them three quarters of a cup. Um, and so, you know, you can use food as your medicine. You've got to get those berries in because they're a really good source of antioxidants. And if you can also see what's going on here in this picture, you're also getting a lot of color. You're not just nibbling on one, um, one vegetable at a time or one fruit at a time. You're getting a variety of, of everything. Uh, and yes, I don't have everything on here. I should have added herbs too. Um, I think it's really important that we also mention that herbs and spices are, are really a good part of that. Um, my turmeric latte, you have probably seen or tried that. Um, but I'm a huge fan of having spices and herbs also in addition to a wide variety of, um, a, you know, of a well-balanced diet. That's really what we're wanting is a well-balanced diet. Now, um, y'all might notice, okay, Nicole, you don't have any grains on there. Um, yes, grains can be anti-inflammatory as well, but like quinoa, frica, um, you can even do brown rice. That's what we had tonight for dinner. My husband made a brown rice with kale and ground beef. Um, it was just a very simple dinner, but it was very filling. It was delicious. And, um, it has a healthy fat from the, the beef that had some veggies in it. I do try to aim for at least two to three veggies at a time. Um, but my husband was at a volunteer event all day working hard. So he was tired and didn't want to do it. But always don't forget about the fresh onions and garlic. I think that that's really overlooked. Um, so I want y'all to do that as well. Okay, so if y'all have any questions over the foods, let me know. Um, you know, yes, you can have them raw, cooked. I think a lot of people try to steam them or put them in a little bit of water and boil them. And then they, um, when that happens, they don't end up using that water. So a lot of that nutrients actually gets left, um, left in that water. So I'm a big fan of trying to at least have half your veggies a day raw. And the other half of it can be cooked. Um, and so that way you do get enough nutrients in, in your diet. Um, I will have to say though, with that said, is I still, even with having a high quality diet, um, I don't believe that we are getting enough nutrients in and that a good multivitamin is, is important. Um, I take ID Life. That is a very high quality uh, multivitamin. It's customized for myself. I do believe that a lot of times we do need some days extra help with like green powders or red powders that are kind of um, dehydrated vegetables that um, are dehydrated fruits or a combination of them. And so I do think that that, that is something also that um, if I feel like you cannot reach your goal with eating all these veggies, that is a good idea to do that. But you have to be careful about where you get that from. They're not all created equal. It's kind of like um, if you were to, to buy, let's say, um, cereals. So some cereals you can have that are excellent. There's, there's no problem with having some cereal with some granola or anything on top of it. But then you get some cereals that may look like they're healthy for you, but when you read the ingredients, like the second or the first ingredient is sugar. So um, you have to be really, really careful. And I know there's, especially on, on Facebook, um, which is the majority of where y'all found me from, I know I did have a good amount of people from Instagram come on here as well. But on there, there's a lot of people selling a lot of stuff. So if y'all have any questions over that, please ask it inside the Super Monsi Healthy Group so we can discuss this as a team and, and look over it as a tribe instead of, um, instead of you just hoping that it's gonna be good for you because there are products in there 
that have like sugar alcohols in it. Um, and sugar alcohols is basically a guaranteed diarrhea or a guaranteed increased bowel movement. It's, that's the side effect. Um, so you're going to be all that's going to be passing through you a lot faster. Um, some of them may not even be whole foods. It might just be chemically made when they're chemically made, um, that can cause inflammation. So you might be to think you're doing something good and in turn it can be actually more harmful for you. So I do want you to be aware that everything is not created equal, that we do have to be more aware of, of how everything's going, um, where you're getting the quality from basically what I'm trying to say. Okay. So let's talk probiotics. So we did learn that 70 to 80% of your immune system is in your GI tract, right? And this is crucial. So if you feel like you are getting sick frequently, um, allergies are kicking your butt, um, the flu, you just couldn't get over the flu, or flu led to pneumonia, led to something else, um, you developed an autoimmune disorder, you developed a thyroid disorder, um, what else, type two diabetes, or um, you just keep gaining weight, it's because we're not having our, our, our GI tract is not where it needs to be. We need that immune system to be able to, um, you know, be able to fight off, you know, and bounce back from that. Um, the same thing, I mean, I know I've talked about my client from this morning about how, how chaotic she was um, with everything, but she's had a cough for two months. And so that, I mean, that's the reason why she's to me. She's only, that was our, only our third, um, call today and um and we have nine nine of them when we work together one-on-one -on -one. so hi becky I, i'm seeing new people jump on so that's exciting um so let's see um one thing i want y'all to to be aware of is um you know like i said she went on for two months with with a cough she should have um healed herself by then and so that was a good sign for me when we found that out was, okay, we really need to tackle your gut health. Um, but in reality, what it was, we needed to tackle her stress and her time management. So that way, then we could tackle her, her gut health. And then that should help out with everything. Because it y'all, y'all, I'm here to say, you're not going to tackle your gut health in this one, this one call. This is not going to be the fix. Uh, you're going to learn a lot from that, but it's not going to be, um, not going to be the hundred percent fix. It can take six months to nine months to heal your gut. That is a long time. <laughs> that is a really long time. So I want y'all to keep that in mind. And that's why the mindset is so important because the mindset is how we stay on track long term. And so if you don't have that right mindset and, and mindset and you, you kind of give up or you say, oh, I've gone off track. I might as well just, you know, throw my hands up. Um, just you gotta stick it out a little bit longer. Just think, you know, if you can't stick it out, try a little bit more and just keep pushing yourself and pushing yourself. And eventually you'll start seeing results. But if you're too stressed out, um, you know, you might be doing a lot of things that we, we should be doing. You're not seeing some of the results or it can actually be backfired on you because you haven't tackled your stress. So, um, I know I kind of got off a little bit and I think that that's coming up soon and I'll, I'll get to that. But um, it's just, it's just that important. I can't stress them enough because stress reduces the blood flow. Um, okay. So here we go. Question says, I have had sinus issues for a couple of months and it keeps causing my lymph nodes, my arms hit and necks to swell. I know part of my, is my stress eating and getting off track with my plant-based diet. Um, you know, and, and not necessarily, I mean, yes, having a full plant-based diet is phenomenal. Um, can I, would I be able to be a, a vegetarian? I enjoy my meat. Um, so that's not something I know that's going to be in my cards, at least not anytime soon. But as my clients understand, and I know there's a couple of them on here, um, y'all know what I've said many, many times, right? We need half our plate to be vegetables. So, so we need to be aiming for more vegetables. We have to be getting more of these in there. Um, that, you know, you can use some of the food as medicine. Um, nuts are a great source to help reduce your stress. But um, nutrition is not going to be the only thing that reduces your stress. So we have to definitely work with, with you know, we talked about sleep. We talked about nutrition, we have talked about mindset, we have to get all of those in order. Um, I mean, we go back up here. All of this also is stress 
is related to mental health, which is related to your immunity. All of this is intercorrelated. It all, it, it all intertwines together. So one of these is out of whack. They're all going to be out of whack, not just the gut health. So, um, you know, I want you charity to kind of look at all of these. And like I said before, um, to start look, making a list and figuring out what's going on. Um, look at your daily to-do list, looking at that. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that we can start tackling together. Um, and that's a lot of what we're going to be learning about in the, um, the Chronic Disease Health Reset Academy. That is huge. I, I'm going to stress a lot on that stress level. I'm going to spot on, on reducing that so that way everything else kind of falls into its place. And like I said, I'll get tag, tag, talk a little bit more about the stress um, on the next slide. But let's go back into that, since I got off track a little bit, um, onto the probiotics. So probiotics um, is basically, it's you have your own ecosystem inside of your gut. You know, you have your own like little network in there that's working on, on helping to digest your food. So probiotics are the live, real bacteria. So when you, um, you know, I've been into making sourdough bread. I make my own um, bacteria that way. I put just flour and water together, put a breathable um, cloth on it, usually a paper towel, let it sit there. The next day, I feed it a little bit more with some you know, flour, which is carbohydrates, which is what they eat. Um, and then they start to ferment, and then you'll start getting that sourdough spread smell, um, that yeasty smell. Um, this is weird. Anyone else see this red line? <laughs> I don't know what that's from. So um, I don't know if that's if y'all can see that or not. And if it's if you can, then I'm sorry. <laughs> so what are the probiotics? Probiotics are that live bacteria. Um, when you have any of the fermented food like kombucha, yogurt, um, what else? Um, sauerkraut, kimchi, miso. All of that are our sources of that good bacteria. And you also can get them in a probiotic in a good form. Um, so that good bacteria, what it's actually doing is um, it's actually, um, we have to feed it. We have to feed it all of this. So when we eat the, all these food, we're actually, what we're really doing is feeding, um, well, not the only thing we're doing, but it's a good amount of what we're doing. <laughs> is we're actually feeding all that good bacteria that we have going on in our guts. So that's really important because we want to be aware of um, if you are taking all these probiotics and you haven't upped your fiber, meaning you haven't upped all your fruits and vegetables, your grains, your nuts, your seeds, you're not going to be getting the benefits. You might actually just be getting some bloating without, um, without any, any real um, benefits of it. So we have to feed that because these are prebiotics. We just call them fiber. Um, and we have to feed the, the good bacteria. So like I said, we have anywhere from two to three and a half pounds of good bacteria in our gut at any given time. So if you have ever been on um, antibiotics, say you had the flu, say you had a sinus infection, say you, um, you, know, you had some, a cough that's going on, they give you an antibiotic. All of that can wipe out that good bacteria. Let's say you're stressed, you have been eating a poor diet, you have um, had diarrhea recently, all of that can wipe it out. Let's say you use um, cleaning products that has a lot of chemicals in it, or you're eating the processed foods that has a lot of chemicals in it, that can wipe it out. So anything that we're doing um, that is not, um, you know, I like to say, if you, if you lived on a, a farm 200 years ago, how would you eat? Um, if you're not living that way, your gut health is, is suffering. So the crazy thing, too, about gut health is it really, um, it doesn't matter how you came into this world. Did you come into this world via C-section? Did you come into this world via, you know, vaginal delivery? All of that will have a... Um, an impact on your gut health. Because if you came vaginally um, and, and mom you know, pushed you out, uh, I'm not saying one way or the other is less work on the mom because it is, you know, yeah, you, you birthed a child. But what I am saying, you're gonna have different gut flora, uh, different uh, bacteria inside your, your intestines. You're gonna have healthier 
good quality ones when you're born vaginally because when we take our first breath when we're going through that birth canal we're actually inhaling some of that good bacteria um, when we are coming out of the um, via c-section we're typically more on a if y'all have ever heard of staph i know in high school staph broke that staph um you know bacteria broke out all over the men's wrestling mat i remember that very vividly uh, i mean i wasn't in there but i remember anyways that was a weird moment. <laughs> but yes, I want to say that, that if you've ever heard of staph, that's typically not a good bacteria, right? We all have staph on our skin at any given time. We just, that's just, we need actually some good bacteria. We have bacteria all over us. Um, but so if we are going, you know, out via C-section, you're going to be getting staph and that's going to be the, the kind of bacteria you have instead of the good bacteria, uh, the other, you know, more beneficial bacteria that you would have gotten vaginally. So, um, I mean, if you haven't had a, a baby yet, you can already tell which route I would prefer you to go. If you have the choice, um, I would definitely vote vaginally because it's going to be better because um, vaginal deliveries have been shown to have less of a chance of the, the baby being diabetic later on in life, obese later on in life. Um, and there is even some studies showing that the IQ level is a little bit higher because of um, the, the microbiome. <laughs> so. That's really important. So um, probiotics also um, help, like I said, they, they help digest your food. That is something really important that they help break it down. They help make some um, B12 even. They help break down, um, you know, into short chain fatty acids, which is what we use for energy for our, our gut wall. So it is something really, really important. If we don't have that, we're missing out on certain nutrients that we are, would otherwise, you know, um, we wouldn't be able to get. So we really, really, that's, we have to feed our good bacteria. We have to have that, that high fiber diet. Um, and um, when we start increasing the fiber in our diet, please start increasing the water that you're drinking as well. Because if you don't start increasing that water that you're drinking, you're going to start noticing um, that you might become constipated. So fiber can do one of two things. It can help you go to the bathroom or it can constipate you. It all depends on how much water you're drinking. Okay. So, stress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yes, we need, to, we need to reduce our stress. So stress, when we are under stress, that is an awesome mechanism our body has to fight something. If we were to need to, you know, react to something like that fight or flight, that is why that cortisol is there. That is why that is made, um, we have that in our body. So we can, um, we can start, let's see, I want to make sure I pull, oh, I'll be all right. Let me stop sharing. I want to make sure it's recording. Okay. For some reason, I had just like a brief moment of, oh my goodness, it's not going to, not going to be recording. Okay. It's recorded. <laughs> so I want um, I want to make sure that you all understand that that that's a natural mechanism that we, we have. But a lot of us are living in this ah stress state. Um, and I, I admit, a few years ago, I was one of them that was living in that stress state um, because, like I said earlier, I wasn't sleeping enough. Sleep was not a priority for me. Um, so my body was naturally in that I have to survive. I am not sleeping. I need I need I need to survive, and, and it becomes stressed out. Um, and so when we become stressed out, or let's say, or if you notice you're getting in the car and you're one of the ones that has road rage a lot faster than you, you think you should have, or let's say you start noticing, um, I know an, a lady that I work with said, I, I noticed I needed to, um, to work with you when I noticed my, uh, my daughter started bleaching because, um, you know, she's like, and I was even just trying to talk to her is because her daughter started getting scared because she started being that mom that was like just yelling all the time, not necessarily hitting, but just yelling. So like a natural, you know, like she's like, ah, I'm scared. This is not right. So what we want to do is, um, is just be aware that if you are living in this higher stress, um, state of stress, it can be manifesting in weight gain. It can manifest in weight loss. Um, acne, hair loss, um, like I said, you know, developing certain allergies to it, anxiety, 
Um, you know, you start noticing all the tension and your neck is just like going like this and you're just having a lot of issues. Um, that's all from stress. Stress, that's all from this nasty little like, started pointing with my finger like y'all could see that. Um, that nasty little thing called cortisol. It's a freaking nasty little bugger. <laughs> the cortisol is awesome when it goes back down. You know, if you've gotten to a fight or with someone, you come back down and you relax. But a lot of times what we're doing is we're just living in this high state of stress. And we're living in this high state of stress, that cortisol is just staying up there, meaning the blood flow to our GI tract is, is decreased. Um, high cortisol, also the byproduct of that, meaning after it's been metabolized, the byproduct of that is lactic acid. If anyone has ever had a cramp before um, from working out, that's lactic acid. That's why we get all tense in our muscles and get knots in our back um, is because of the cortisol leaving a byproduct of lactic acid. So um, we really need to get that stress under control. You really cannot stress, can't stress enough <laughs> how much stress you need to reduce. <laughs> I just say, because I can't, can't stress that enough. Um, that's the number one thing that we talk about um, when, when we work together is, is, okay, how can we reduce your stress? What's going on in your, uh, in your life? How can we reorganize some things going on? Um, and then we talk about, you know, there's, there's different things that we can do. Um, I know, like I said, there's a couple ladies that I work with on here on this call. Um, we talk about meditation, and I know it's hard for y'all to meditate. Um, some of y'all just think of it as, as a prayer that you're talking, you know, you're thinking and you're just, what we're trying to do is just, um, we're trying to reduce that chaos that's happening in our mind, right? When we, if you, and you're like, I'm not stressed, ask yourself, how are you sleeping? How are you sleeping with that? How are you, are you, do you take a long time to go to sleep? Do you, um, or do you wake up in the middle of the night? Uh, if you are not having a good night's sleep, we are more than likely stress-related. Um, there's stress going on. So that needs to be addressed because high levels of cortisol, is the only, that's not the only thing that's going to mess up is your, your stress. All of that can have an effect on your thyroid. Cortisol binds, so it attaches itself to the thyroid-stimulating hormone, the TSH. So for all I know, I have, I had like a 76, Seven or 78 women signed up for this. So that means that many of y'all um, will be either be catching it live or in a replay. Y'all, if y'all have a thyroid issue or that you've been diagnosed with one, um, it may or may not be related to cortisol. Um, we need to check your stress level. We need to understand what's going on with that. Uh, reducing your stress level means less cortisol in our body. Less cortisol means your TSH is able to be free and do what it needs to do versus bound up and, and attached um, and stored in our muscles because that's what cortisol you know, will do. It breaks itself down and there it is. It's, it's stored as lactic acid. So stress is just one of those nasty things that um, really screws up all the functions that's going on. High cortisol levels has been also linked to dementia and Alzheimer's. So if you are living in that high state of stress and you start realizing you're forgetting things, um, that's something that we need to, to be aware of. Uh, um, and then I know I have, I was talking to someone this morning about, oh, well, I, I sleep better now because I take a sleeping pill. Sleeping pills only allow an extra 15 minutes of sleep a night. 15 minutes of sleep a night and that's it that's it so is that really worth it because what happens you're like well, yeah it's worth it Nicole I get to sleep well no in reality you're not getting into that deep sleep that you need to get into which helps re, you know start that repairing um, and also those uh, sleeping pills actually have been linked also to de um, to dementia so no matter if you are um, you know sleeping because of that sleeping pill or you're not because of that high cortisol have you all noticed that a lot of people that are getting older lately are not remembering a lot of things? Um, and it could have been because of their highly stressed life. We gotta chill out, y'all. We gotta find our zen. We gotta do things that are fun for ourselves. Um, get a massage. I mean, I go every month to get a massage. I'm hopefully we'll bump it up to two times a month very soon. Um, and have some help out around the house. Go for it if you're like, okay, well, I can't afford all that. Um, go for a walk by yourself. 
do it at home pampering. I mean, come on, I, I do that all the time. I will give myself, my husband will work late one night and I get the kids to bed. I'm like, awesome. I'm having a pampering night just for myself. Um, no TV is involved. I have, um, I either take a nice warm bath. I um, read a book. I uh, put like a face mask on. Um, I do stuff to like help reduce that stress. And by doing that, I'm improving my mindset. So I want y'all to think about Peter Pan. <laughs> I'm going to have a three and five year old. I cannot not have some like, you know, Disney. I don't even know if I think he is Disney, right? Um, yeah, because Disney World, Peter Pan's there. Yes, um, Disney reference for some reason. So I want y'all to, to think happy thoughts. Um, improving your mindset literally raises your vibration. And people that, um, there's been a lot of studies. If y'all have, don't believe me, look into Deepak Chopra. I'm going to put him in there. Um, in the, so Deepak Chopra is, um, he's actually a physician who um, has used meditation and vibrations to actually um, heal cancer. He's actually, um, and they say, oh, you can't do all that. Y'all, um, illness, dis-ease, um, when you see disease, it's dis ease your body is, is not at ease when you become it into that, that alignment when you have your brain your brain is so powerful when you can control your thoughts when you can control your vibration and help raise your body your vibration up to um, that happiness disease does not cannot live there so um, when that's when you say like happy people they never get sick right happy people when they're they're uh, you know they, they don't have as many issues I mean they probably have their own issues going on and everyone has something, right? I mean, I feel like I have like six to 10 different things that, that's going on, but am I always living in that? If I were to always live in that, oh, well, it's me, I don't feel good, I have all that, I would probably be getting sick a lot. Not probably, I would, I would be getting sick more. Um, I would not be feeling well um, as much as I do. I mean, um, like I said, I... I only have half a thyroid. I don't take any medication anymore from it. Um, I don't know if y'all are familiar with my story, but I was on Synthroid for 12 years and I was able to get off of it um, because of everything that I'm teaching you right now, including the mindset. Um, and I have the energy to do everything. I mean, the last two days I was out there um, spreading compost in the front and backyard. It was 35 bags and each bag was 40 pounds you know like I was moving all that like if I wasn't feeling good if I didn't have that energy because everything else was in place I wouldn't be able to do all that I mean I mean I I know it's, it's cow poop but I thoroughly I thoroughly enjoyed myself like I said I'm not the worst person I enjoy that I'm not the typical um I'm not a typical girl <laughs> so uh, but I want y'all to know that like when you are in that happier state, when you are feeling good, nothing, nothing's going to bring you down. And if it does start bringing you down, you're, you're in this higher state. You're not going to come all the way down as low as you have been. I mean, I immediately after I had my thyroid removed or my half my thyroid removed, I did go into a state of depression because my hormones were out of whack. And I, and I, you know, I was a college student. I didn't really necessarily have the best diet then. Um, I was a soccer player, so I thought I could go to Dairy Queen and eat everything and run it off the next day. Um, and I did. <laughs> and I would do that all the time. Um, but I, um, if you're in that state of depression or in that state of anxiety, um, you a lot of times get stuck in that. I don't feel well. I'm always going to be stuck like this. I'm always not going to feel this. And that you kind of spiral and then you, you keep being stuck there, right? So one thing that I want you all to start doing is um, you know, have, have good books around you, have good podcasts around you. Um, I go on YouTube all the time. Deepak Chopra is one of them that I, I've been hooked to recently. Um, oh, this she's a fun one. Um, Abraham Hicks is another lady that I, I use all the time. She has one called, and I, I, I y'all love this one. Um, it's literally, it's called, it's a good day or, or just my, it might be just good day. But um, she just repeats that over and over and again. It's a good day to have a good day. And, and you know, she has other stuff going on, obviously. But um, you just kind of, you feel your body and just, like, start sitting up more straight and start feeling good. And when you're doing that, you're feeling that vibration. And they can, the scientists can measure this. You can measure that when you're in a happier mood, 
you can feel that vibration, those waves that are going off of you. And then, and that's when people say, I can see your aura. I can see what's going on. They can see this energy. Some of us can't see. Um, and, and I don't know why some people can see that. Uh, I'll leave that up to God to, to tell me why until scientists can prove that. Um, but um, when you're not feeling that well, you have, you, you do feel smaller, right? But you have a lower vibration where that energy is not, not as, as happy. Um, so when you're happy, you feel good, you have, you can like, emit all this energy and, and it is contagious. It is something that you can actually, you know, kind of feel good with someone else. So I just want y'all to know that when you are in a higher vibration state, when you're in a better mood, everything else is going to start falling into place. And also, like I said, and the good thing too about this is um, a higher vibration also means that your mindset is a little bit better. When your mindset's better, that means you're going to be on track a lot better, right? You're going to be able to do things long term because that's a long time. So what happens is that we, we tend to like, fall off track a little bit, right? We, we say, oh, I screwed up. I ate something. Mm, I just screw it, you know? Uh, I'm just going to give up. I, just, I already blew it. I'm just going to just whatever. But if you have the right mindset, then that's when you know, no, I'm not going to, um, I'm not blowing it. I can do this. I can do this. And, and you tell yourself I can do this and you get more motivated on it and then you'll be able to stay on track more. And then it becomes a habit. And then all this becomes a lot easier. So, um, you know, that's really, really what I wanted to, um, talk about today. That's all that I, I have for you guys. Um, you know, if y'all have any questions, um, you can unmute yourself or I can unmute you or you can ask it in this group, um, or in the group chat, but I just want y'all to really, really pay attention to, and uh, you'll get a copy of these slides. I'll send this out as well. Um, but all these components. I understand nutrition is huge and that's really, really going to be helpful and beneficial, but all of these components are, you can't do one without the other. That's really, really important. So, um, so here's everyone back. So if y'all have any questions, like I said, ask away, I am here for you to help y'all out. Um, and if, if not, um, then like I said, those, on the, the recording, um, you know, you can definitely reach out to me inside the Super Monty Healthy group. Um, and I'm also going to, hold on, let me screen share one more time because I want to show what else y'all are gonna be getting. So I am going to be giving y'all this as well um, as a yay, thank you for being a part of this. So this is a gut health work, um, workshop meal plan. So this is something that I, um, you know, kind of little tidbits here and there of what I, I want y'all to start doing and um, kind of give you a little bit of an idea of what you should be doing to kind of help y'all out. So this is kind of my gift to you guys for, for um, coming on here and, um, you know, taking your time out of the day. So, okay, so Chris is asking, is one kombucha a day fine? Um, and have you made your own yet? <laughs> Um, don't ask me. I even put it on my to-do list the other day on Monday with me and my husband, but then we ended up, um, getting a lot more things at the, uh, at Lowe's. So I ended up getting a peach tree. So that took some time digging and moving around and got more vegetables. I got a watermelon, two watermelon plants. So no, not yet. I haven't made mine yet. But one kombucha a day is totally fine. And you do have to be a little bit careful. Some kombuchas can be a little bit more higher in sugar than the others. So I, I do want you to be aware of that as well. Because, you know, if we're just um, putting more sugar into our body, even with the probiotics on it, still not really going to be the best bet. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll keep you posted if I, if I do end up making it. I mean, I will, I have all the stuff to make it. I just haven't, I mean, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> so I'll probably end up waiting. I'm going on a cruise on the first week of May with um, you know, my husband and the kids. So I'll probably wait till I get back so I can tend to it a little bit more. Um, but what is right sugar? So you just want to look for the, um, the no added sugar uh, in it. So 
Some of them are going to, um, I mean, they have to add sugar in it to have it ferment anyways. So that's what it, you're fermenting with the sugar, whether it be the fruit. But what you're looking at, I don't have, I had a kombucha in there earlier, I don't have it now. Um, but ideally, you know, if you're into the kombucha, I would say, um, you know, five to 10 grams of sugar would probably be what you need. Um, but more than likely, you know, it's going to have probably a little bit left over, but it should all be fermented out. Um, and that's why it does have a, a smidgen of alcohol. It's like 0.01%. So it's like not enough to do anything, um, to you, but it will be fermented, um, to get that good bacteria. So, um, but I did before I want, I leave y'all, I did want to go over, um, the, um, the chronic disease health reset Academy. So this is my three month program that I am so, so excited to, to, um, put on for y'all. So it is basically a program that's going to walk you through everything that you're eating. So it's going to be a step-by-step -step program that's going to show you how to remove the, the processed foods from your diet. It's going to show you how to um, and start incorporating these whole foods, how to time management better, how to uh, meal plan, how to improve, you know, um, Canada, if you have yeast overgrowth, it's gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to, you know, migraines, um, thyroid, um, autoimmune, anti-inflammatory. So month one is our detox month where we learn how to remove all those chemicals. We learn how to detox our liver um, and then month two and detox our body in general and get that literally that crap out of <laughs> crap out of it. Month two is where we learn how to, um, start customizing and re replenish and start building back in. Um, and now I know some people get scared when, I hear, when they hear the word detox. Um, I am not a believer of just juicing or doing anything like that. Um, it is not healthy in my book. I am not a, a huge fan of it, but I will say that I do incorporate some juices um, into that, that, that part of that month. Um, I do incorporate supplements. I do incorporate um, food as medicine. Um, and so, I mean, that is, that's my, my spiel. I want y'all to use food as much as possible to get you to where you want to be. Um, and then uh, month two, like I said, that's really where we customize. That's really where we start building together. I said it is a group. We have weekly um, calls, three three weeks out of the month. We have calls so that way you all can get some one on one like this. You have the ability. Of, um, you know, once you're my client, I am going to call you out more than I was able to um, here, and hopefully, you will have a little bit more, um, you know, desire to to really start making those changes as well. Um, and then month three is those lifestyle changes. So that's everything else. Those other um, five components to that gut health. If y'all remember all those six little circles in there, diet was one of them. But month um, three is really where we tackle everything else. Um, you'll get a little bit along the way of everything, but that's really what the focus is going to be on month three is, um, you know, how to build on and keep that lifestyle. Because if you don't have your stress under control, all the rest is going to, you know, it's, it's not worth shit, right? <laughs> it's not going to, it's not going to work. If you don't have, you know, your mindset under control, you're not going to be able to stick to this long term. If you don't have, you know, all of those little components, um, I'll likely have, I have a couple ladies that I've talked to some guest speakers that are, um, you know, experts in time management um, and to come in and, and talk to y'all. Y'all are going to get a little bit of her actually in the um, Super Moms Eat Healthy. She's going to come in, I think in May to, to speak. Um, <clears throat> so that way y'all can start getting on that, but we start May 15th. It, the doors are open right now. I have a good amount of ladies already in it. They are working on their from processed foods to whole foods course. Um, and like I said, it's something that's really, really uh, a neat way because my one-on-ones, I only have one spot available left and, um, and one of them actually <clears throat> just got grabbed two days ago. Uh, so um, this is going to be the next best thing to be able to work one-on-one -on -one close to, with me. And, um, you know, <clears throat> if any, <clears throat> gosh, I guess after an hour, almost an hour and a half of talking, my voice is finally saying, ah, Nicole, shut up. Um, but this is going to be the next best thing for y'all to be able to, to work closely with me to be able to start seeing those results. Um, like I said, you, you, you want, you want this. This is, Coming out from, you know, like I said, I've been 
where a lot of y'all have been. I've, I've had GI issues. I've had, you know, food sensitivities. Uh, I mean, I have a half a thyroid. I have had migraines. I have a heart issue. I mean, like I get it. I, I get where you've been from. Where I'm at now, way better. <laughs> way better. A lot, lot more fun um, once all those pieces start to come together. So I really promise that that um, you're going to start feeling and start feeling a lot better. You're going to start feeling good. You're going to start recognizing that lady that's looking at you in the mirror because for the longest time, um, that's that's really what I kept telling myself. I was like, who are you? I don't know who I am. I was becoming someone I wasn't liking. And um, so this is really what you're going to be starting to do. It's starting to learn how to really find yourself again and become that woman that you want to, that healthier version of yourself that doesn't have to worry about running to the bathroom all the time, doesn't have to worry about covering up on the beach doesn't have to worry about, you know, taking all those medications. Um, we can do this naturally. We can get you to where you want to be. Um, and over that three months time, you know, you'll see a drastic change. And so, um, if y'all are interested in that, um, I'm also going to put that link in the email that I follow up with. Um, if y'all want to do a quick one-on-one -on -one with me, I do offer free 30 minute nutrition assessment calls. So that is your way of, of telling me what's going on so I can see if this is actually a good fit for you or not. Um, and then also to see if you, you feel like I'm a good fit for you. You know, I get that I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Um, I'm kind of harsh sometimes and to the point and, and, and um, you know, kind of call people out. But I mean, sometimes, sometimes someone's got to do it. <laughs> so um, like I, said, I really am honored and I wanted to say, say thank you for everyone jumping on. Um, I really appreciate you being here and, um, if y'all have any questions, so yay, I'm excited and curious that you enjoy this. Um, yeah, that is, there is a lot to, to take in. So that's why I said, you're not going to be able to understand all of it in the, the two hours, but that's why I wanted to send you all everything so that you can review it again. You can get um, the recording, the, the slides, and that meal plan. Uh, I want this, I mean, it's, I've been where you are. It sucks sometimes like when you're, you're not happy with where you're at. Um, and I want, I wish that someone would have done the same for me. So um, that's, that's really why I'm here. You know, I, I felt like I had to do all this on my own. I had to learn all this on my own. I mean, obviously, you know, I have my degree in nutritional science and that aspect of it, but everything, other, uh, all the other components, um, to, you know, healing my thyroid, to overcoming migraines. I mean, I even had a neurologist, um, and she didn't understand why I went caffeine free, you know? And so there's, there's components to this that, you know, there, you, you can feel better again. That's basically what I'm trying to say. So, um, I hope y'all enjoyed this. And if you did, I would love, um, so to hear about it. So let me know inside the Super Moms Eat Healthy group, you know, let me say, you know, that was awesome. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I learned so much, you know, let me know what you learned and what your biggest takeaway was. Um, you know, I'm talking for an hour and a half, so I want to make sure that some, some of it's sunk in. <laughs> so again, I really hope to see you all in the um, Chronic Disease Health Reset Academy. So um, there are multiple different payments. So if you don't see the one in there, that you are wanting um, to do. I wanna make it affordable for everyone. Um, that, um, oh, I'm glad, Cornelia, I'm glad that you enjoyed this. Um, that, yeah, I really, really hope that, that y'all um, got a lot out of this. So, like I said, I really wanna make sure that, um, that y'all have everything that you need and are, are learning everything that you need. Um, and so that's why I'm here. So I don't be afraid to ask any questions. Don't be afraid to, to speak up. So um, I hope you all enjoy this and I will ha and have a good night. So I'll see y'all soon. Bye. Let me see how I end this now. <laughs> all right, let me stop.